Uh, payment schedules, whether it be for, I guess it does, it does make a difference whether or not you're talking about a job from an individual owner or a contractor. Yeah, it does. Hey guys, Jeff here with Profit Dig again. We got our buddy Luke Filter here with us today and Jeff Givens, our partner. Hope everyone's doing well. And uh, before we start our videos, I want to tell everybody, you know, be sure and uh, look us up at uh, ProfitDig.com. Check us out, uh, watch our videos, like our videos, share them, comment, tell us stuff you want to talk about or hear about. And if we don't know about it, we will try our best to, to find a, the correct answer for you or the best answer we can to help you out. So today, Luke had a uh, topic he's wanting to kind of discuss a little bit. So go ahead, Luke. Uh, payment schedules, whether it be for, I guess it does, it does make a difference whether or not you're talking about a job from an individual owner or a contractor. Yeah, it does. Now, let, let me ask you real quick, though. Was this something that you kind of had an idea about before you started your own company, or did this kind of come out of nowhere for you? Um trial and error i guess but uh i know working for bigger contractors there usually is a, a payment schedule you know we were mm -hmm. trying to get hooked up with Meritage pretty early on uh, marriage homes there i think they're pretty sure they're nationwide mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but um you know usually like on, on their schedule it was uh turn your turn your invoices in on the fifth of every month and it's 25th you'll be paid um mm -hmm. uh, Right now, we're still dealing, I guess, with uh, smaller type jobs, uh, individual homeowners, and then a few uh, contractors, smaller contractors that just build one home at a time or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but even still, with any type of contractor, I mean, they're likely going to need to get paid before they pay you. Right. Right. And it's good to understand. Yeah. Up front, exactly. what your expectations are, because you don't want to be in a situation, especially if you're a smaller company, that you're you're running off of no income mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. You need to know what that period of time is going to be. Right. Whether it's 30 days or 60 days or worst mm -hmm. case scenario, something like 90 days or right. 120 mm -hmm. days. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. a long time to be running with no income. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause yeah, when you first get started, you know, you have, there's no credit, you know, so nobody will give right. you, Hey, yeah, just come get as much rock as you want. You know, you know, you can't do that up front, but, uh, Luckily, we did. We we got approved uh, for Rogers Group, so we got a rock account now. All so right. that's we're getting there. We're getting yeah. better. But uh, uh, but yeah, we run into a situation where here recently where we've uh, there's just kind of been no timeline, and uh, we're we're making it through it fine. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that is definitely something that mm -hmm. definitely come up for and somebody. So you, that you, get, know. you got maybe some tips for luke on how to to weather this or predict this in the future well i mean if it's you know like i said earlier you know my dad he told me a long time ago a minimum you got to have a cash on hand to run a minimum of 120 days and the way you look at that like if you go in business today <clears throat> and you start your first job today you've got to work a month before you can bill when you bill like most contracts are written you know if you're a sub you will be paid within 45 days of them receiving their check well, chances are they got to wait 45 days to get their check. Mm -hmm. So you've got 90 days right there just to get your first check plus another 30 days that you've had to work to apply for that payout. Is net 45 pretty standard? Yeah, pretty standard, yeah. And, you know, if you don't have the cash on hand, That's you, <laughs> you, you pretty much are going to have to have, you know, uh, some kind of line of credit set up at your bank or your, or your financial organization. To where you know if it takes you just say you know one hundred fifty thousand dollars to run you know for one hundred twenty days, you need to have one hundred fifty thousand dollars you know worth of line of credit, and once you start building your backlog and start you know taking money in and making profit, then you can you can eventually work away and do away with that uh, line of credit you know unless you just have to have it. Well, we we talked about some strategies for that too. That as you grow start putting money aside mm -hmm. so that you can borrow from yourself. Right, exactly. Rather than borrowing from the bank. Yes. 
and, and that's what you want to that's what you want to do you know you spend a time to put together an, an estimate or a proposal to send to someone you, you generate your cost for that bid all right in doing that you know how much time and money you got in cost for equipment for materials labor fuel everything else trucks whatever you may have you've got that money in there in your bid so you roughly know how much you've got in there for your trucks you know how much you got in there for your equipment you know how much you got for labor so if you make just say you make a, a progress draw on a job say you, you bill for 25 percent mm -hmm. all right now that 25 percent you should be able to take out 25 percent of your equipment put it aside 25 percent of that goes to the other 25 percent goes to your labor you know whatever your percentage may be you know section that off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. put that aside put it back in your account or don't touch it and then what's left is what you pay your bills out of right yeah. uh yeah that, that's something that we still need to uh you know we've got our business business account at the bank and stuff but um uh, like you like you in your book uh i want to be able to get us set up on have different accounts for different situations or different fundings or right. whatever you and know. That, that's when you can really truly see you know what you're making and what you may not be making mm -hmm. you know because you want to have it set aside like if you got to count for your your trucks well you know say something happens you need a new set of tires on your truck you know mm -hmm. say you got a triaxle dump truck need a new set of tires you know you're looking at what three thousand four thousand dollars mm -hmm. put a set of tires on there so you got the money sitting there to pay for it mm -hmm. you don't have to go to the bank or anything it's already in that account you got to count for every equipment dozer go down so you got an engine goes down that's thirty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars put a new engine in so you know you got that money sitting there to pay for it you ain't got to go to your banker and say hey you know i need to borrow money got a dozer you know engines mm -hmm. down just sitting there not doing anything and it may come to a time where you may not have enough equipment you may have to rent equipment mm -hmm. you can also use that equipment money to get you by to pay for your rental equipment mm -hmm. yeah. well and that's you know a long-term strategy right mm -hmm. like right. You no know, no company's going to start out of the gate unless they've got mm -hmm. right. external funding which I would say a lot of people going out on their own is not going to not going to have it. Right? Yeah. You know, if you're one of those lucky few, good for you. But <laughs> right. the rest of us have to figure out how to work through these things. So it's okay to have a vision in mind, mm -hmm. and I think it's good to have this goal, even if you can't operate with that vision immediately. But over time, as you continue to grow, you continue right. to, you know, use that profit that you're that you're putting into your jobs. That shouldn't necessarily early on be profit for you. Right. It needs to be profit for the company that you can do things to achieve right. these well, and, and to kind of put things in perspective, like say you're a sub working for a general contractor. Well, say you're on a multi-million dollar site. You know, say it's a high-rise downtown or something. Say it's, you know, 50 to $100 million. All right. The reason they write their contracts like that, they're going to pay you 45 days after they get their check. They can take your money your portion of money, they're going to put in an escrow account. They're going to draw interest on that for 30 days. Mm -hmm. In 30 mm -hmm. days, they get that interest. They can, At that point, they can take that money out and pay you. But if you add up all their subs across there, say, you know, they turn in a $5 million draw mm -hmm. for that year, for that month. All right, that $5 million, if it's drawing one and a half, two and a half, three percent interest in an escrow account, then they've made a, a, a lot of money off of your money mm -hmm. by holding it for an extra 30 to 45 days. And that's why they write their contracts like that, so they can do it. Yeah. Because they're steadily making money off your money throughout the whole job. Like, and other like a bank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky, and that's something that you need to negotiate up front in the future, you know, like when you're doing yeah, something, you know. absolutely. And always have some sort of contract. Yeah. And make sure, you know, that, that payment schedule is included. Mm-hmm in that uh, contract well i've had as soon as the lawyers get done they're taking forever yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah i think we've been waiting on that since december yeah but uh yeah that's a it's a definite must as long as you know whenever it's coming it may not be as soon as you want it to come but you definitely need to know yeah. when it, I mean, when as long it's as it's agreed up. upon right mm -hmm. and i think you should assume worst case scenario right like if you if mm -hmm. you say like we expect 45 days uh, expect 45 days yeah. like be prepared yeah to accept for now if you find a somebody who you can work with a contractor and they pay you sooner than that mm -hmm. keep that in your back pocket this guy's trustworthy he's gonna pay me on time I might want to do more business with him right you know he might 
you might even want to give him a break on some of yeah. mm-hmm. some 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 of your bids just to continue doing work with someone who has a good business practice yeah, like right. that. But if if he says forty five days, be prepared for that forty five yeah, days. Yeah, exactly. You know. And that's what we do. You know, we have customers, you know, that we cater to that will pay us usually before time. And, you know, like I could be working on a, a, a bid for somebody that we don't ordinarily work for. And then this customer I'm talking about, you know, or multiple customers, all of a sudden they send me a bid. Well, I'm going to put this one over here off. You know, so what if I don't get theirs? You know, I hate to lose business, but I'm going to focus on a guy that I know is going to pay me and pay me on time or before yeah. time. Yeah, right. Well, great. Thanks for an uh, interesting topic, Luke. Um, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Like, share, send us some comments. If you've got some different topics that you'd like to cover, we'd love to talk to you guys about it, uh, give you our opinions on them, or even maybe you can convince us to do some research on some things that we don't know about. Yeah. Like, that'd be great, too. Uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. Appreciate your time, everybody. See you all next time.